Next on MLR Weekly, San Diego Captain Blair Cowan. Major League Rugby's best recap. News from Rugby Morning's John Fitzpatrick and previews from Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. Rugby Wrap-Ups MLR Weekly brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig & Whistle, New York City. The world's best rugby pub. And Lean and & Limber. Stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Presented by Rugby Wrap-Up, Matt McCarthy in New York City. It is great to see you. Thanks for tuning in once again. And we have a great show ahead of us. But before we get to all of our components of this program, editor's note, ladies and gentlemen, it's no longer Lent. So yours truly is back to cursing, drinking, and lying. Just be warned. With that, what do we have ahead of us? We have Mr. Blair Cowan, the captain of the now on top of the league, San Diego Legion, a rousing recap by yours truly, arguably the best in Major League Rugby, and Brian Ray with his precocious previews and predictions of what's gonna happen. And before we get to all of that, we have our recurring segment, Rugby Morning's Coffee Break with John Fitzpatrick. John, hello, how are you? What do you got? Hey Matt, I am doing well and I'm wearing a dinner jacket just for you, but look, it took eight rounds but there are no longer any unbeaten teams left this season after the san diego legion beat the seattle seawolves on the road and established themselves as the top team in mlr matt you're a betting man what are the rugby odds that san diego represents the western conference in the mlr championship uh if i'm looking at the west and you're asking that question i'm gonna say two to one are the odds Next. Well, I'm going to test your geography on this question. Let's buzz on over to the Beehive State. Utah. Ding, ding, ding. Where the Warriors won their third straight game and ended Houston's two-game winning streak. A big win for the Warriors as Utah is just four points back of the Sabercats for the third playoff spot in the Western Conference. A couple of things. First off, it says Utah on the teleprompter. And thirdly, or C, if you're not paying attention, you wouldn't know that there was one and two. Uh, you threw me under the bus because I asked you about the Houston winning streak for my appearance on All Access. You told me it was a four-game winning streak that Utah snapped, and it was actually two. Thank you. I know that you're happy about that. Next. That was payback because you made me mispronounce some other player's name weeks ago, and I just remembered it. Let's move on up to Toronto to talk about the Euros and only his second MLR appearance, his first start, Canadian sevens player. Deshaun Bowen, who was called onto the squad because of injuries, scored three tries, including a 95-meter effort. But Matt, speaking of injuries, pretty scary moment when Aero star Sam Malcolm collided with a New York player in midair. It appeared that Malcolm hit his head pretty hard on the ground. He was able, after a few minutes, to get up and walk off on his own. So we wish Sam a speedy and healthy recovery, but Matt, the Arrows just can't seem to catch a break on the injury front. They had 13 players listed on the injury report going into round eight. Yeah, they have had this problem this year and last year. I don't know. You know, it's just it's just fate. It's a it's a bad run. But New York is pretty dinged up as well. Jack Heighton out again. He's the key player for their offense and he plays great defensively. So both teams battling that war of attrition right now. Next. Hey, last but not least, Rugby ATL announced the return of back rower Connor Cook. You may remember that Cook announced on Instagram last July that he was stepping away from professional rugby, but now he is coming back and will play for Atlanta for the remainder of the 2023 MLR season. Well, just like Michael Cordelione said in The Godfather 6, which was filmed in Atlanta, just when I think I'm done playing, they suck me back in. That's what Connor Keyes is all about. Next! Matt, that's all I got. We are approaching the halfway point of this season, and I can't wait for the second half. Once again, a stellar uh, contribution from Mr. John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning's Coffee Break. And before we go forward, we have to look back. 
Let's go to the best recap in Major League Rugby. The Chicago Hounds went sniffing in Quincy, Massachusetts, looking for a victory, but they were barking up the wrong tree. The New England Free Jacks, despite not having Conradi available and Patras coming off the bench, muzzled Chicago fans like crazy Pat Harley by keeping the Hounds on a short leash. The Free Jacks won despite collecting 13 penalties for the second consecutive week and being forced to make 249 tackles. That makes for a lot of grass stains. The Boston adjacent FJs did score five tries and held Chicago out of the try zone as time ran out for a bonus point win that sent the Hounds home with their tails between their legs and no points. Final score, 31-19. The Toronto Arrows hosted their first home game of the season against arch rival New York. On a sun-splashed perfect Ontario day for rugby, both teams were a bit snake bit with injuries, but the day quickly became about Deshaun Bowen, who scored a hat trick in a stunning Major League Rugby debut. No time was needed to clear the ice of thrown hats, however, and the hometown crowd was treated to some wide open hockey, uh, rugby. The Arrows made 272 tackles to New York's 113 and lived by the big play, but came up one short. New York crossed back over the Niagara River with a bonus point win, while the Arrows stuck two bonus points into their quivers in the 29-27 loss. Down in Atlanta, Rugby ATL bolted to a big lead and it looked like they'd run the Northerners, Old Glory DC, right out of the South and Silverbacks Park. But these ain't your granddad's old glory, and they came ready to play in the second half. Despite despite getting two yellow cards, Atlanta was able to hold on mainly because of advantages in lineouts and at the breakdown. Old Glory did manage to get another pivotal point in a loss as Atlanta gets a bonus point win, 35-27. Down in Space City, Houston, we have a problem echoed throughout sports books across the globe as Houston tanked versus Utah. The Road Warriors were supposed to get sent into orbit by Houston, but no. They survived two yellow cards and made 217 tackles to earn the most improbable and most impressive win of the year. Utah wins their third straight 34-30. Up in Seattle, the perfect Seawolves hosted their rivals from Southern California, San Diego. This was billed as the match of the weekend and it lived up to the hype. Statistically, this was as even a contest as you'll see, but it was Nate Augsburger's brace, that's two tries folks, that propelled the Legion to a comeback win at a rocking Starfire Stadium. The big names played some big games with today's guest, San Diego captain Blair Cowan making 22 tackles and Herculean hooker Sama Malolo rampaging for 145 yards. San Diego holds on 23-20. I'm gassed. I need a break. And so do our sponsors. We'll be right back with Mr. Blair Cowan of San Diego after this. When we pick up the ball, we also pick up a legacy. A legacy that stretches beyond your current team. A legacy built on the backs of those who came before you with hard work. And for those who will come after you, we promise it won't be easy. But we'll be there, supporting you on and off the field. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. And we are back, and ladies and gentlemen, we have the pleasure of welcoming in Captain Cowan, Mr. Blair Cowan of the San Diego Legion. Blair, thanks for taking the time to come on with us. Oh, thanks for having me, Matt. Just to get the fans uh, up to speed on you, you have quite the resume. I got 13 seasons in the UK playing for the likes of the Cornish Pirates, the Worcester Warriors, Saracens, and the London Irish. 
before you headed to Japan in 2022. You also represented Scotland for seven years, which means you had significant time in Edinburgh and Glasgow. Now, other than Japan, yeah, majority of my career was in the trenches of uh, the UK, playing in some pretty harsh weather. So how easy was it for San Diego to negotiate your contract, showing you the beaches and the sunshine? I mean, oh, I didn't even look at the figure, man. I just looked at the weather report and the surf, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's not it. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, oh, I'm and in. you have grass? Yeah, I'm definitely in. What's it like being the captain of a team filled with some very high-class, world-class players? And I went through, you know, there were certain channels that I wanted to go through just to make sure. Um, it was okay with a few of the boys are like a Ma'a. Um, obviously, everyone knows Ma'a. Um, and the fact that he was captain here prior, you know, it meant a lot to me to make sure that, you know, that, that sort of thing was okay and that I had his support because I needed it. And he's huge in helping me this season and uh, this year. And also uh, chased up another, like you say, uh, uh, the likes of uh, Marcel, um, having Nate and uh, DP and uh Tommy guy Franklin. named isaac ross isaac ross absolutely you know these are all boys that i needed to sort of just just touch base with before i accepted the role because i couldn't do it without them and i certainly didn't want to rustle any feathers and that stuff's important to me um and, and you mean as the new guy on the the new kid on the block so to speak i think the new kid just taking on that new role even if i had been here prior and they offered me that role this year that i'd still go through those same channels as that's important, you know, like you're only as strong as the people that you're surrounded by. So for me, that was my first protocol was just to double, just to go through those guys and just check that it was all good. And we, we were on the same page and I had their support and they've been uh, instrumental in, in helping me with my role in that position this year. Well, it's working, man. Obviously, you guys are doing it right. You're firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah, I, and I think it's uh, it's a bit of luck of timing, not just um, me taking their role. We've, we've managed to get a group of boys hungry for it. You know, we've got, we've got certain boys who are starting their journey um, that are just super excited to learn and be surrounded by experienced players. We've got boys in the middle there that now want to push on, um, who, who want to take that next step. Uh, and then we've got the older boys, probably like myself, uh, Ma'a, Isaac, um, who who just there just love the game and and want to just probably still have an appetite to win silverware and do it somewhere fresh, which is America, and that's certainly where, where my mindset is, and um, and we're all just loving it at the moment, and um, certainly enjoying the culture here. What's what's the one difference or one thing perhaps that you didn't anticipate? when you came over here? I didn't give the, the local players enough credit, to be honest. I've been blown away by the talent here. Um, and some of the some of the, the young talent has still got plenty of uh, time in the saddle. They've got so much to offer, not just the game, but um, Team USA. And obviously, we're not making the World Cup. It's, it's not the best position, but it's almost like um, a cleansing process for USA now. It's like, right, okay. We can see where the MLR is heading. We can see the talent now because we have a, you know, a, a league of high standard here that we can keep track on these players, and um, and then we can progress and actually because America, man, there's one thing you guys do right: it's sport and how you grow games, how you grow sport, and how you get people uh, engaged with it. And uh, rugby certainly got a lot to offer this country and. And so I don't think you're going to be shy of talent and, and the way I see it at the moment. With our boys, I'm, I'll probably just speak mainly about our boys. I've been blown away by the talent. And I, I feel that they've sort of been fully undergunned over their careers. I feel they should have been playing in higher leagues all through their careers, but um, we're very lucky to have them here. Well, that's the nature of the beast now. We have this professional setup and we're having generational rugby talent for the first time. You know, like mates of mine that, I, that were teammates of mine now have kids that are playing rugby. We didn't have that before. Now, you know, this is what everybody's saying. Well, it's taken so long. Well, that's the way it organically has to happen. It has to grow from the, the grassroots up, right? We were always trying to convert players out of college or university and make them into players. And that, you know, you know better than anybody, that doesn't work. Absolutely. And, and I think uh, Nate is probably the prime example of he, he's played rugby since he was one of the very few players from America born and bred in america who played rugby from a young age and i personally think he's a freak and yeah. uh 
you know, like every week he's he's one of our go-to men. And I mean, he's not the biggest of guys, but the way he hits, the way he manages to avoid uh, getting tackled, I'm just blown away. And, and I mean, I've been around some world-class wingers and I certainly rank him in there. Um, then we've got the young... Um, the young boys and, and even boys from abroad who are qualified to play for USA now. And I, I look at that play pool just from outing alone. And I'm like, you know, a few years down the line, America could be a threat. And it's also a credit to guys like you because they're getting this valuable, ex valuable experience playing against pros, pros. And you guys have a lot of those kinds of players in that lineup. So I only see it as a benefit. Yeah. And I don't know if we, we, uh, it's probably more just for them to see they, they play with, certain players that come, like you say, with resumes and to actually be like, oh, actually, yeah, this is guy's no different to me. It's that kind of confidence that once you see it and sometimes you put people on pedestals and once you take that away, you know, the sky's the limit for you. And once you sort of get past that mental block of like, am I or aren't I at that level? And then yeah. once you realize, oh, actually I am, you know, the sky's the limit. And, and certainly the more exposure the game has here, the more top end rugby players that we can get here and they realize, you know, I can duel with the best. Um, there's only one way up. Like last week, for instance, one of my good friend's son was playing against you guys. He came in late in the game, number 23, John Rizzo. And Ma Ananu just like ran right over him. But my <laughs> thought process immediately was the Rizzo family has a great story to tell for the rest of their lives, you know? Amazing. Yeah. And and the kid was, you know, the kid gets back up and he's ready to go again. But, you, you know, these, these are things that you can't, you can't replicate. You've been around the block. We've, we've established your resume. You're in San Diego. Now your team is on the top of the table at six and one big win at a place. that's very difficult to win in Starfire stadium against the sea wolves. If the season ended tomorrow and you took the Legion out of the equation, who would be the favorite to hoist the shield? Just from me playing uh, the season, it would be Seattle, in my opinion. they got quite a broad game plan. Like, they could, they seem to do, be able to do it all. They're quite direct, quite physical. They could also um, play with a bit of width, and I think their set piece was was very good. Um, and, and their kicking game. So I think that that's what made them such a good game. That's where we're trying to get. What is the expectation of you as the captain of San Diego this season? Is it shield or bust? Obviously, I think we all know we're out there to win the silverware, but some things are greater. And I think it's it's when I leave here, I hope it's in a better position to go forward and we've built a lasting foundation. I think it's the key, especially with it being such a new game. We, we want to build, you know, support base. We want to build um, the young boys to then take the, take the torch and, and further this club's success. And final question for you, where will you uh, end up after rugby, where do you want to live? Probably I'll go home. I'll raise my two sons and uh, I'm going to live by the coast and then look to open up my barber shop with a little coffee shop on the side and, uh, and surf with my boys and, and hopefully watch them play a bit of code growing up. Sounds like a plan. I, I, I'm not normally in the need for a haircut, but that sounds like something I'd <laughs> like to come by. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, sir. Mr. Blair Cowan of the San Diego Legion. Cheers, Matt. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back with Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News after this. This is the Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith, a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? Okay, before we bring Brian Ray in, uh, we just have a quick special segment because of all that's going on on the college rugby landscape and college rugby players are all throughout major league rugby rosters and more will continue to be so as the league grows and the players levels of competition get better. And there was a great game up at West Point last Saturday 
Army versus Davenport. You have to watch this one on the RugbyNetwork.com if you can. It was an epic, most exciting rugby game I've ever seen, or one of the most exciting rugby games I've ever seen. Check it out. But more importantly, I was able to catch up with the respective coaches, Matt Sherman of Army and Dustin Steedman of Davenport after the match. Check this out. Coach Matt Sherman, that was easy. Yeah, uh, it is. playoff rugby never is, but yeah, that was an uh, uh, emotional roller coaster. I would say. Bit of an odd game. I mean, I, I have to go back and watch it, but uh, a lot of offense in the first half, all defense in the second half. Uh, but I give Davenport a lot of credit. They're, they're, they're pretty crafty in attack, and they seemed like they couldn't put a ball on the ground today. You know, they, 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 they held on to everything and some very good players over there. But, um, yeah, our team's had a, had a real tough year. We, we've, uh, you know, we haven't gotten every result we wanted, but, you know, we've also had a, more injuries than, than we've ever had here. Uh, but in, in that, you know, resiliency has been kind of the, the theme. And, and today that's kind of how they played out. They just kept coming back in that second half, even though it looked like the door was shut on us. The, the ending of this match showed all the resiliency. Yeah, no, it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty astounding. So, um, yeah, no, super, super proud of them. It's really, it's been a tough journey for us this year, but I'm, I'm, I've loved it because the way they've responded to the challenge has just been everything you'd want in a, in a, in a man, in a, in a, in a team, in a leader. That's um, why, why they're here, I suppose. Coach, uh, what, what can you say? This is what it was a great game. It's a great game. I mean, I, there's not much to say about it. This is back and forth, and uh, you know, uh, it's, it's unfortunate we lose on a penalty, but uh, the guys gave everything they had. Every bit. I mean, uh, if you if you look, if you look at our, our season, um, we we built we built this in September last September. Um, had winter off. We just started rolling through here. Um, and I think we really had some belief coming into this game then that, we, uh, that we could have the other hand, obviously attack the outside edges. And they decided they're going to do that all game long. Uh, had some great games out of our four and five. Uh, yeah, hitting up the middles quite a, quite a bit on the, on the guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, as a coach, you can't ask for anything more than that. Disappointed a little bit, but proud, absolutely. And thoughts on the next step? Yeah, tough challenge. You know, we get rewarded with a, with a real tough challenge. Um, you know, we've... We've lost two games to Navy now, one at home, one on the road, and, and um, you know, uh, a try and a, and a penalty both games. Um, you know, and I think, um, I don't think we played that well the first time we played them. The second time I, th I thought we played pretty well and, and, and they well and truly, you know, uh, had the day. Um, and, you know, we've been, since that game, we've been, we've been, we've had to, with all the injuries, had to rejigger some things and we'll continue to do that. Had another injury today, but, you know, um, I, I think we have a, uh, we have a puncher's chance. You know, we're certainly not going down there to make up the numbers. We're going down there. Again, you got to get down to the NCR CRC sevens at the end of the month. It's going to be great. And also check out the Army versus Navy match this upcoming weekend and the D1A playoffs going forward. And we're back and we're back with Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. Tough match for your arrows at home to lose. Toronto hosting New England. <laughs> this is a tough one, the two Canadian teams going head to head. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Whoa. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a tough New England side. I, I think, uh, you know, they look pretty sound in that victory this past week in Toronto I mean for yeah they finished within two points they really had a crack at it but uh, I kind of looked this uh, at that one as New York really dropped the ball how many times were they held up like five times I think I mean yes it's a testament to Toronto's desperation but it was kind of Swiss cheese defense in that first half there really should have been a few more scores and this isn't a, a very long trip for uh, for New England. I'm going to take the free jacks in, in this one. I had an entertaining game. I expect this to be a good one. Houston hosting Dallas in the Texas two-step cup bowl, if you will. And Houston coming off an inexplicable loss at home to a depleted Utah team. Not a characteristic performance at all from them. Dallas coming in on this, uh, on a little bit of a win streak. Can we say that? So they're going to have a little bit of confidence, maybe a little pep in their step. Houston, though, they're going to want to, you know, be bouncing back. I expect that uh, they'll be back and Heineken Meyer will be there. So I'll take Houston at home, but uh, I think this might be a lot closer than uh, certainly their, their meeting earlier this year. NOLA versus Rugby ATL. It's a really interesting one. I mean, NOLA are 
streaking right now. They 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 look like a. a They're running across the field nude. <laughs> the something like that. That's right. They, Cam they, Dolan's got to be leading yeah. that charge. They they were at times in the game against Seattle. I mean, even though they lost that game, it's one point against uh, Seattle, who were unbeaten. I mean, it was a good performance. I got to give them some credit there. Uh, I I think they're a better team than that. Nola have never beaten ATL. Never. Not even once, which is kind of baffling to me. So, you know what? I'm going to give them the, the nod this time. I think they've, they've paid their dues. They've lost a few times to these guys. They're looking better. They're going to be rested. Uh, let's take Nola at home and in a, an interesting match. Looking forward to this one. Another interesting match. And you could say, you know, it sounds ridiculous that we keep saying this, or I keep saying this, but Utah hosting Seattle. Utah on a three-game win streak. Seattle are really turning back the clock. Samu Manoa, Andrew Durantalo, and Matt Turner all coming on just a you know, 65-minute mark against San Diego. I mean, I, I didn't expect to see. I thought we'd see Samu. I didn't expect the other two at all. I think we all assumed that they were retired. So we're not surely sure what kind of a lineup uh, Seattle is going to have. Utah, I mean, they're streaking right now, talking about streaking. They are flying around the pitch naked. Uh, this is a tough one to call. You know what? I, I like J.P. Smith's influence in this game he's been brilliant all season he's got that booming left boot that uh, is really ideal i think for a game like this uh i'm gonna go with seattle but this is a very tenuous pick old glory hosting new york yeah uh, new york you know they got the win in toronto they got the bonus point so that's what they wanted so they got that uh, they didn't look super sharp they were you know they should have scored a couple more tries uh, when they had but they were missing bodies both of us picked dc last week but when that was before we saw the lineups as soon as i saw the lineup i flipped to atl because they're playing without any second rows at all they didn't have any starting locks they didn't have any replacement locks they got two loose forwards playing there but i think i gotta go with new york chicago going into san diego this is not gonna be an easy match uh yeah you know chicago's just uh they're making little improvements every week um we still just haven't seen them click right have we i mean uh you know i, I chris Martina, i think is playing uh, pretty well for them whether it's at fullback or, or at number steady. 10. just He's a just steady a, steady yeah. player top team in mlr you got to take san diego at home with this one i just hope that uh, you know chicago can can can, can give them a, a fight in this one i don't want to see a blowout score uh, and i don't think we will i think uh, you know chicago has uh, some tough guys on that team likes of luke white who are out there who have no intention of of walking in and just lying down so uh, i think this will be a good one john cullen another one they've got some tough guys um, we'll go San Diego, uh, but I'm still going to pick them to get a bonus point win from this one. You mentioned John Cullen and Luke White, two of my favorite players, and John Cullen coming back for a reprisal of his career, right? We've got players coming out of retirement. It's crazy, but it's, it's a long season, and this is what it's all about, right? Who can get the best guys, those bargain jewels, former players perhaps. Brian, thank you very much. Always astute observations from my esteemed colleague from America's Rugby News. And on that note, we're out of time. Thank you to Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. Thank you to John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. And thank you to Mr. Blair Cowan of the San Diego Legion. And of course, thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other programs, including the Rugby Odds and the College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter and please join our American Red Cross blood donor team.